I absolutely believe Eric was a survivalist. I mean, he just kind of knew what to do. And think about it. The guy survived five years in the woods, and nobody ever found him. Eric Rudolph has finally been added to the FBI's most wanted list. The FBI believe that he's still alive and hiding in the woods of North Carolina, and they're worried he's still making bombs. This concern has caused the FBI to not only put Rudolph on their most wanted list, but to increase the reward by 10 times to $1 million. This was the biggest domestic manhunt in American history. Over a 1,000 people were looking for Eric Rudolph at one time. There were several hundred agents there, including SWAT teams from ATF, SWAT teams from the FBI, search dogs, people from Georgia Bureau. Interesting to watch them interact. Part Cherokee, part Indiana Jones, he's a self-taught caver who's been hunting for Eric since 1998. I'm Darren Free, and I help lead the Southeast Bomb Task Force in the search for Eric Rudolph. So those are the snowbergs. And that's where Rudolph lies. These have got to be the toughest mountains I've ever walked in. The Nantahala Forest is almost impenetrable in places. It's easy to get lost there, very hard to be found. Looking for Eric was like looking for a needle in a haystack. And not only that, it was a needle who wasn't just hiding, it was moving around. I had talked to one of Rudolph's childhood friends, and he was always going in and out of mines and caves. And he would take caches of food and put in them back when he was in high school. So that was another thing that kept telling me, Eric Rudolph is in these mountains. I think he did emotionally train for this. He knew that he was going to have to use whatever survivalist skills that he learned to withdraw from society completely. It's been a difficult manhunt for Eric Rudolph for over half a year, but federal agents recently discovered his abandoned pickup truck Monday. Specially trained dogs sniffed out the scent of explosives all over the pickup truck Rudolph had abandoned. This threat caused agents to increase security around their headquarters. Rudolph liked to watch. He watched the other side lounge bombing. He watched the Birmingham bombing. When he was hunted by FBI agents, he hid in the woods and watched them. According to Rudolph's own claims, he had a radio, and he was hearing the different things about the search that was going on. This is where they found Eric Rudolph's boots in the middle of the river. By the time they went to get hound dogs, they were gone. Federal agents now compare the stress of looking for Rudolph to combat duty. The FBI and ATF have begun rotating many of their agents in order to give members of the 200-person task force a much needed break. Traditionally in law enforcement, if you don't hear anything from anybody for six months or a year, they're dead. Things eventually ebbed away. You know, fewer and fewer people were there, fewer and fewer resources dedicated. But certainly after 9-11, the idea of continuing to look for the one lone guy in the mountains who hadn't bombed anybody for several years was no threat by comparison. The agents believe there's no way he can keep doing this. Everybody was sure someone was helping him except me. <laughs> Everybody said nobody can do this on their own. There were definitely people helping him. At the base of this pipeline, people were dropping him food off. I will never, ever believe that he lived off the land. He became a sort of folk hero in Western North Carolina. They were writing songs about him. There was one called Run, Rudolph, Run. Run, Rudolph, run, Rudolph, run. Or the FBI's are going to shoot you with their gun. You know, they, they were very proud of him. He was their Robin Hood. It was only towards the end that he started getting weary. As far as the lack of finding Eric Rudolph worry me, no, no. The FBI, ATF, all the law enforcement agencies, the public, he'll be found. I, I, I believe that. I've got to believe it. 
Five years after the manhunt began, they still hadn't found Eric Rudolph. In the mountains, he had stashed food, he had stolen grain, but he also lived on deer meat, acorns, salamanders even, anything he could find. The salamanders that he was eating are toxic. He wasn't a, quote, survivalist. He was a scavenger. This is a letter from Eric Rudolph. He goes, this was all a learning experience. His first few years in the woods were pure survival. It was very hard for him to get enough calories. Eric Rudolph had a camp right by town. He thought people had stopped looking for them, and really, they had. So he would forage in the dumpster behind a grocery store, and he was at it one night when a cop was on patrol. Rudolph would note whenever patrols came by, but this was a rookie cop who wanted to catch a burglar, so he came at a time when Rudolph didn't expect him, and he was caught diving into a dumpster. He finally exhausted himself. By his own admission, the reason that he was finally caught was that he was just tired. That's the Eric Rudolph that I've come to know. It was that murderer, and that's what they were looking for for all those years, and they finally got him. Thank you.